Oil is so hot right now. So I'm going to look at UCO, the USO, another CO, that's a secret. And uh, I've got the oil news here. We're going to flip through some oil news reports, check out storage reports. Um, talk about the tankers a little bit. I'll probably do a big tanker thing in the next video. And I guess a little look at the S&P. Let's get the whole oil story going here. This is Brian Lewis with MMT Investing, and things just changed. So we get uh, last night a little drama on the oil front here. Uh, big gap down. Uh, this is the UCO. This is the 3X levered oil, uh, the West Texas Crude Oil Fund. And it's an ETN, not a fund, sorry. Uh, exchange traded note. And so there's not actually any oil backing this thing. It's completely speculative. Uh, ETN on the oil with a 3X levered uh, contract kind of structure with futures. And so... Um, let me just let me flip through the oil news real quick and then we'll come back and look at all these charts and see what everything looks like and so uh here's a good one from oilprice.com uh, talking about the crude storage and so the the american petroleum institute this is the trade organization that represents 600 whatever um oil companies has estimated another inventory over uh, oversupply of another 100 million barrels uh, and last week it was almost 8 million that they're projecting to oversupply last week this week it's a smaller oversupply and um, the eia which is the energy uh, information administration this is the u.s government's report on the oversupply says that <laughs> wildly different um saying inventories are falling by 700,000 barrels uh, so the actual trade association says an extra 1 million of oversupply. U.S. government is reporting minus 700,000. Uh, and this is wildly, wildly different estimates uh, on the oil oversupply for this week. And then here's the, the U.S. oil production estimate. And this is from the EIA, the Energy Information Admin. And that's the government's report that the Oil has dropped from American production from 13.1 million uh, down to 11.6, kind of over the last month. Um, and we don't have the estimate from the uh, from the trade association on these numbers, but uh, American oil production has been decreasing, uh, and the the low oil prices make it hard for the American companies to be profitable. And here's an interesting one. This is on Hello Hellenic. Uh, shipping news, and we just get a short statement uh, from Frontline, one of the big oil tanker companies that says, we are likely to see an unwind of floating storage in the second half of 2020. Um, as the volume of crude you know, stored on oil tanker vessels is uh, currently estimated to be 200 million barrels and maybe close to a peak. And so uh, Frontline is just saying, you know, we're getting near a peak now, and after the peak, it will be decreasing. Okay, and so that's the that's the normal projection. And uh, S and P Global Plats is talking about the crude tanker storage here. And uh, there's a bunch of quotes from TK in here. Uh, highlights from the article: Near-term tanker freight uh, is dictated by oil supply and demand imbalance. And that's 10% of the crude tanker fleet is currently being used for storage, exclusively meaning they're not moving around or unloading anything. Like they are just holding for like more than a month, just holding crude. And then the dirty tanker uh, order book and the dirty tankers are the crude oil tankers um, is 8% of the total fleet. And that's a 23 year low. So, yeah, so I mean, yeah, we know that tankers are being used for oil storage. And TK is coming out and saying this looks bullish. Um, the supply and demand looks bullish. And floating storage and the order book environment uh, combating depressed crude cargo demand uh, is, to, you know, the near and the medium term. So, uh, TK uh, is reporting that this looks bullish out to the medium term, uh, several months. And 
that's kind of what I was projecting, you know, in the last few weeks in my oil videos. Uh, and if you want to go check back through my oil videos, I have I have a bunch of videos on kind of the structure of the oil contracts and stuff like that. If you go through my playlist, I have an oil, an oil playlist that talks about the tankers and the crude oil and everything that's been going on. And so more from TK. Um, they're just saying that they expect it to stay volatile and continued, uh, you know, supply demand mismatch. So volatile, but ongoing, but ongoing need for floating storage from the tankers. And here it just says that freight across the dirty tanker ships uh, has been on decline because they're using it for storage instead of shipping. And the the global crude demand is expected to fall by 8.6 million this year. Um, and that's from the IEA. That's from the American government. Oh, here's a good one. So um, TK says that all told around 10% of the crew tanker fleet is being used as some sort of floating storage. Uh, so it's re reducing the amount of ships available for shipping cargo. Um, so there's a kind of a supply crunch on shipping uh, due to the crude oil storage as well, which is something interesting to point out. And uh, and they say that they say like a hundred crew tankers are being used for floating storage, meaning just sitting there for longer than 30 days. Uh, but just as many ships and other hundred ships are, you know, just sitting at the ports uh, for seven to 20 days. So I'm not trying to be used as floating storage, but they end up just sitting there and sort of being storage as they're waiting at the ports. And then here we go. Um, looking at the charter contracts. Uh, one year charter, charter agreements and six months and two years. Uh, they're saying 20% of their spot uh, available days is going to be booked out for the next 12 months. So they have about 10%, I guess, sitting just fully crewed. They have another 10% that's stuck at the ports. And now 20% is completely booked out. Um, so they're saying this is super bullish order book for them. And they think this is really good going forward. And so let's look at let's look at the actual oil. All right, so here's U.S. oil. This is the West Texas uh, crude contracts. And West Texas has gone. I mean, they had the the contango contract squeeze here down, you know, a little bit negative or whatever. But uh, they've kind of gone from a floor around ten up to. Uh, 34. And so for me, like 30s, mid 30s was my projection for the oil price for like two months from now, not right now uh, in the middle of this cycle. And so this is a pretty impulsive uh, move up. This looks like a, this looks like a five wave up. And so um, just on sort of general trading, this looks like a, an impulsive kind of move that would expect to get corrected down. And so um, there's different levels in this wave to kind of look at as far as, well, it's already corrected down to this one, but um, but just to see if we're correcting uh, and from the Elliott wave standpoint, if we would be looking to correct this little wave here or uh, or if there's a bigger correction possible. Um, but as for right now, like I have a really uh, bullish outlook on oil for maybe three months and it's already up. I think this is up too high right now. And so I would expect a little pullback before it would continue to go up. And so let's uh, let's look at the, the UCO and the USO and check out how those ones are doing. Okay, so well, let me hold, let me freeze it and just let me scroll through. So the, I'm I'm out on the weekly view for the USO, and so the USO um, kind of drove up. There were a big oil spike up into the financial crisis and a big crash here. Um, but what it's done since that crash has been very interesting because oil oil was going up this whole time here, and the UCO. Uh, didn't get the gains that the oil prices got, and then oil was going up here too. Let me let me throw the chart on top. Let me throw the um, throw the U.S. oil on top of here. Yeah, so you can see you can see right here. Um, 
that these upswings looked okay uh, at the beginning of the USL uh, when it was first created. And you can see where the highs, oh, well, I'll go back and look at the numbers. Um, but relative to the oil, uh, we had this big up move here and then uh, USO hasn't gone up with the ups and it has gone down with the downs and it has not gone up with the ups and it has gone down with the downs again here. And so uh, this is an interesting thing. Uh, the USO is an ETF. And so it's backed by the actual physical oil contracts. And what you get is you get contango in the contracts when it's going up. Um, so when oil is going up every month when these contracts roll over, uh, you can get a long squeeze on the contracts and they have to sell at a discounted price uh, and roll them over to the next month and you buy the next month at a higher price. So while oil is going up month over month over month, uh, the USO is losing value to the contango and it's just not getting the gains uh, month over month. And also it's, you know, it's a, it's an ETF, so it's compounded. Uh, so every, you know, every day when they do the compounding math, uh, you lose small percentages. Um, you just basically mathematically all the ETFs and ETNs uh, decay. Um, and so holding ETFs or ETNs like this long-term that are built on futures contracts and that roll, um, you lose percentages in the volatility on the compounding and you lose percentages month over month uh, with this, with the oil contracts uh, on Contango. On the way up, you lose percentages. Um, so the, these contracts have, uh, you know, these funds have a negative carry. And you can see the upside just doesn't make it to the height uh, each time that you go up. And if you scroll through, you can see. Like if you get rid of that, it starts looking pretty good, right? But each time it just doesn't quite make it as high. It doesn't quite make it as high. And then you see on the way down, it does. It, it matches on the way down. And then it doesn't quite make it up, doesn't quite make it up. So it looks like it looks like it's fitting in the short term. But as you as you zoom out, you can see that it's just not it's not lining up with the real oil prices at all. It just like loses a bunch of value to the oil prices. And the UCO is quite similar. And UCO started during the financial crisis, so we didn't get a little run up first. I mean, it just immediately bombed. But you can see the same thing here. Uh, it, it's actually trending down a little bit while oil's going up. This, this is crazy. Okay, so. Let me take this, uh, let me take the oil chart off of here and let me show you the actual numbers on UCO. And these are, these are dollars. Uh, so, I mean, UCO started at $27,000 uh, per share, $27,000 in 08 and came down with the oil crash, you know, down to 5,000 immediately. Wow. Um, all right. So, yeah, I mean, it crashed from 28,000 to 5,000 immediately. And then while oil was climbing up, it climbed. I mean, it got to a peak of 16 from five, which is pretty good. Um, but by the end of the oil rising, the highest peak was only, uh, you know, 10,000 here. And it's been working its way down while oil has been working its way up. And, you know, and then you get the crash here and it goes down from 10 to, to $266. And, and this whole time while the oil is going up, it does the same thing. It actually works its way, it works its way down or flat uh, while oil is going up. And then we get into the current situation now, which is here. And let me get in on the, I guess like an hourly chart or something. And you can see, uh, you can see here. All right, so I went out to the daily chart. Hourly is too tight, but uh, it worked its way up to a good peak here at uh, almost thousand, and then we get six hundred, you know, five forty, and 
and it just kind of once it falls it just kind of doesn't rebound and it kind of stays down and then it falls and falls and now we got this kind of bottom and now now this is the trading area that it's in you know eleven dollars to 25 or something like that but i mean look at where it came from it's at just like twenty dollars now it started at it started what was it 20 some 26 27 thousand dollars to 15 thousand to 10 thousand to you know 25 thousand to 1 thousand 600 540 400 70 bucks and where where is uh feb let's see yeah here so this this is the this is our crash here this is the peak of the crash at 400 and it's come down you know before the crash it's five whatever it is 540 to 400 to 311 to 77 and now we're trading in here and this little flat line here is the big rebound that everybody's talking about in the uco stock it's this it's this thing right here and it went up from you know 11 to 24 uh which is good that's you know more than double and if you stretch it out it looks great and that's what most people do is they're just like oh well it bottomed and now it went way up but now those price drops that you get in this kind of contract and uh the the uco is not an etf it doesn't actually have it doesn't have physical oil backing it it doesn't have physical oil contracts it's an etn exchange traded note and note means it's just an unbacked debt contract and it's a 3x levered and so it has the the leverage built in and it has the rolling futures contracts built in that we just talked about uh with the uco and and uh and it has the compounding and the compounding is on a 3x levered so this uh gets more dramatic moves down and it has the same kind of thing where it just really really it has to get a smooth kind of move up to get up and if it's choppy those down moves will just kill the up movements and so these things do terrible in volatility uh, even if it's a volatile up movement they just don't see the gains uh, if you get a smooth up movement like this i mean you, we saw oil was just like a a super impulsive wave up and so this looks okay um, but if we got volatile movement in the oil after this that would not look good for this here and so i was just looking at shorts this week because it looks like we might get a little correction on this um and the uco is pretty expensive to short and i mean uh, like if you're buying put options or something like that like you're basically buying insurance on it going down and that insurance uh is pretty pretty expensive and uh and so that's kind of the look um going long on uso and uco has negative carry built in and it has downside risk um and if oil's at an all-time low uh you know there's ways to go long you can just trade the spot price and this is not financial advice but I mean, you can just trade the spot price of oil and you don't have to buy one of these uh you know funds that has compounding and everything and if you look the funds up it doesn't say you should be holding them for months on end anyway it says these are built for day trading purposes so you know just like if you zoom into one day like the trading from open to close on a single day it doesn't have compounding and it does not have contango any of those factors like those kick in day to day the compounding and month to month the contango kicks in so it's just when you hold these things long term that you get these negative carries um, and if you just trade from open to close on one day you don't get any of the negative carries and so this is a you know a 3x sort of for day trading um, but i think it's important to realize people don't understand the structure of this thing uh, what you get when you hold it long term and then also the potential uh, you can you can short this if you think it's going to go down which I, I think oil is trending up but uh, you know shorting the down moves is relatively safe if you get like a longer 
a longer dated kind of put option. And if it's trying to go up, it usually doesn't go up that much uh, in the volatility. And then when it does get a down movement, I mean, the price can drop in half and, and not make it back up. Uh, so that's kind of the shape of these things. And this is the price range that we're trading in now. And generally what happens with these kind of funds is they start at a high price and they just keep working their way down until you get to a price where they're not interesting anymore, a dollar or less or whatever. And they'll just delist. They'll delist this ETN and they'll just create a new one that starts at 26,000 or whatever it is. Um, and so, I mean, so this, this volatile reversal top that we're getting today is really dangerous for being long on this thing. Um, because even if we get back up, like the up is, it's hard to get back up. You have to get a really smooth up movement to get up. And you don't want the choppy volatility uh, day to day. And um, and I was going to look at SEO again. I did a video showing this, um, but this is a short fund. And so uh, for the purposes of going long on oil, the, uh, the the short crude oil fund. If you short the short fund, you're going long, and you don't get the negative carry built into the thing. Uh, if you short this for the purposes of going long on oil, and let's see, I'll get some. Uh, let me get some Bollinger bands. Okay, uh, I'm on the daily, and I've got some Bollinger bands on the short crude oil here, and so. It, you can see that the bottoms are less volatile here, and that's when oil's going up. This one goes down because this is a short fund. And then you can see the bottoms get pretty volatile. Uh, I mean, the, the tops here when oil is down get pretty volatile. And it pretty, it pretty much never breaks the Bollinger Bands to the downside, like tiny little breaks to the downside. Um, but it will break these Bollinger Bands to the upside. And when it does, it generally will get, uh, you know, some reversal action down. And so that's a good indicator of when to go long on oil or what you would be doing is shorting this short fund. And right now, oil is at a high price, so it's down. Um, but if oil, you know, if these Bollinger Bands kind of squeeze down and we get over here and break the Bollinger Band um, here or get close to it even, uh, that could be a good place to short this and then you can actually get and get the structure of this thing in your favor instead of losing negative carrier for a longer hold like you can actually hold this thing and not lose you, you actually have the compounding math uh, on your side and these and these kind of uh and these kind of funds and so that's the short crude oil the seo and then as far as the oil tankers go um, I, I'll I'll do another video on the tankers. It's too much to do the whole tankers in this video. Um, but the the fundamentals still look bullish for tankers over the next couple of months. Um, but right now it's a really tricky credit contraction cycle, and the tankers are still kind of reversing off a little hypeish thing. And so uh, looking for a good entry point to go along on the tankers is kind of tricky right now. Um, but that's the general oil outlook now is the oversupply is decreasing, but there's still oversupply building up. It's not the supply is not decreasing. The oversupply is less and less each month at this point. And um, and so the tankers are still being used for oil storage and oil prices have rebounded quite a bit and done an impulsive move up. So I think this is a risky spot for oil. And also the general stock market is looking at a a risky position right now at kind of a, a top edge on my on my double rainbow if we hit the s p i'll do a quick little look at that and so yeah here's my here's my double rainbow and so we've been following this arcing shape uh, on the s p and we're at the top edge here and so i mean the two biggest things to expect here would be uh, if this is switching into a bull market, uh, the bulls would want to get above this thing. And if this is still a bear market, you'd expect a downward correction uh, inside of this, inside of this, 
you know, double rainbow and most likely down to the bottom edge because it's been just going from edge to edge on this thing the whole time. And so this is kind of a bear target uh, for me right now over the next whatever week or two. And so that kind of down move uh, would look pretty risky for the tankers, I think. And risky for the oil companies for sure, like Exxon and Chevron and all of those companies would get hit by a, another wave down kind of contraction. And so I think there's just a ton, a ton of risk in oil right now and a potential little short opportunity to play with over the next, well, I mean, just today, maybe today, hold it over the weekend. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe a short opportunity and uh, yeah, please uh, hit my playlist. If you want to check out more oil videos that talk about this stuff and I have financial education that talks about the monetary the whole monetary system and what's happening with this credit contraction cycle that we're in now and when we'll switch out of it and uh and happy trading